SCSI hard drive emulators are very popular among vintage Mac enthusiasts, partly because of just how fast and easy they are to use. But are you leaving performance on the table by using them as is? Let's do some testing and find out. While there are interesting results in the end, this topic isn't the most exciting, so I'll try to keep things concise. Before you can install an operating system on a vintage Mac, you of course need to format the hard drive. For most people, this means using one of Apple's utilities, such as HDSC Setup. It'll not only format the drive using the Mac's file system called HFS, but also install the hard disk driver. That driver is really important, as it's what bridges the gap between the computer's hardware and the file system, but it's not something many people think about. Over the years, there were several third-party utilities for formatting hard drives on the Mac, largely because Apple had a policy of its own tools, like HDSC Setup, only supporting Apple-branded drives. If you bought a drive, internal or external, from another manufacturer, you'd need to use one of these third-party programs. They not only had their own way of formatting drives as HFS, but they also implemented their own disk drivers. And not all of them were created equal. And that's the premise of the experiment I wanted to try. Would third-party disk drivers work differently than Apple's own? And if so, could they eke more performance from a modern SCSI drive emulator like a Blue SCSI? I started with my Mac SE30 from 1989, which would serve as a good example of a Motorola 68000 series machine. This era of Macs had SCSI controllers that maxed out between 1 and 5 megabytes per second, which was generally faster than what most hard drives at the time could handle. But a solid state solution could theoretically saturate it, and that's where we'll potentially see differences between the drivers. I wanted to install a Blue SCSI version 2 in my SE30 and found a nice bracket I could 3D print. Problem is, it's designed for a slightly newer revision of Blue SCSI than I have, which is a little bit longer. This gave me the opportunity to design my own bracket, which I'm pretty happy with since the Blue SCSI just snaps in. The only screws you need are to hold the bracket to the Max metal chassis. I'll include a link in the description. I used the excellent tool Disk Jockey to create a number of blank 80 megabyte disk images, one for each piece of software I was going to test. My methodology was this. I'd boot the Mac from an external Blue SCSI, format the image using the utility I was testing, then install Mac System 7.1. After that, I'd boot from the newly installed system and run two benchmark programs to see how it performed. Because the Mac, the Blue SCSI, and the installed system software were the same each time, only the way the drive was formatted, and the disk driver that was installed, would be different. For benchmarking, I used Macbench 2's default disk test suite, which was pretty comprehensive and took a considerable time to run, about 45 minutes. I also used FWB Hard Disk Toolkit's Bench Test 1.7, which was simpler and quicker, but still produced useful results. What I saw was interesting, but made me wonder if it was truly representative among all vintage Macs. So I did it all over again, this time with a Power Mac 9500 from 1995. These PowerPC-based machines had faster internal SCSI buses, capable of up to 10 megabytes per second, which is also the Blue SCSI's theoretical maximum. The plastics in Macs from this era have gotten incredibly brittle with age. I wanted to install an SD card extension cable in an empty PCI slot cover, but there's no way I could flex these release tabs without it snapping off. So I had to do all the testing with the machine's cover off so I could access the card from the front. The way I tested was largely the same. Boot from external Blue SCSI, format the disk image using the software under test, then install System 753 and boot from it. For better compatibility, I ran Mac Bench 3 this time, but stuck with the same version of FWB Bench Test. 
And this time around, the numbers I was getting back were even more compelling. On the SE30, I tested 12 different formatting tools. Two were from Apple, a version of HDSC Setup from 1996 and Drive Setup from 1998. The rest were all third-party utilities, with release dates ranging from 1990 to 1996. Right off the bat, I found two that simply didn't work at all. Procom's SCSI tools didn't detect any drives it could work with, and Storage Dimensions' Mac and Store said the drive was unsupported. But the rest worked fine and revealed some clear winners and losers. Both of Apple's utilities performed about the same and pretty well, along with Keras Mac's Anubis, OnTrack's Disk Manager Mac, and FWB's Hard Disk Toolkit. In some tests, Transoft's SCSI Director Pro also kept pace but fell behind in others. And strangely, Lassie's silver lining pretty consistently trailed the rest, especially version 563 from 1995. Back in the day, silver lining was one of the more popular options. Surf City Software's Light 07 was another good performer, but it, and silver lining, generally isn't recommended for really old Macs, as it can produce strange behavior. The Power Mac results were far less consistent between the utilities. Apple's drive setup did well, but HDSC setup was significantly further behind in most tests. Casablanca Works Drive 7 from 1997 also did poorly, which is strange given that Power Max had been out for years by the time of its release. By far, Hard Disk Toolkit did the best, though there was still some differences between the three versions of it I tested. Personal Edition 177 from 1996 was the overall winner, offering solid results in every benchmark and approaching the maximum that the SCSI controller can handle. This is interesting since that was a feature limited and less expensive version compared to the full hard disk toolkit suite. And like before, Silver Lining Lite 221 from 1998 didn't quite keep up, while version 563 produced impossibly high numbers, like double those of the other tools and beyond what the SCSI controller in the Mac was capable of. So what's the takeaway here? With 68K-based Macs, you can gain a little more speed by using a third-party formatting tool, but it may not be worth going out of your way for. On PowerPC machines, though, you can get consistently better speed by going with FWB Hard Disk Toolkit. Exactly how much improvement you might see will vary, of course, but I think 10-15% to is pretty typical. And what's nice about these results is that they should apply equally regardless of what kind of drive you're using, whether it's a blue SCSI, SCSI to SD, or another modern solid state alternative. The best thing is, of course, since it's vintage software, it's tough to beat the price. Few would turn down a free performance upgrade. If you liked the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. Here's another video you should check out, and as always, Thanks for watching.